All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Article 1, which is the legislative branch. So in Article 1, the legislative branch was designed to have the power to make the laws. It is made up of a group called Congress, which is bicameral. It's just That's just a fancy word that means two parts. So it's going to be made up of the House of Representatives and the Senate. It was designed to balance the rights of large and small states. The House of Representatives is going to, um, the members are going to serve a two-year term. They are going to respond very quickly to the changing wishes of the voters, which is why they have a two-year term. And the number of representatives is based on the state's population. Now, the government has asked that a census to be taken every 10 years. And that is done so that they can count the number of people within each state. The number of representatives in the House, though, was decided to be 435. And again, that's based on the population sizes of each state. There are some requirements, though, for being a member of the House. Each House of Representative must be at least 25 years old, and they have to have been a citizen of the United States for seven years. Now, Congress is divided into two houses, as I mentioned earlier. Those houses are labeled as the lower house and the upper house. The House of Representatives is considered the lower house. The Senate is the upper house. So the Senate uh, or the senators are going to serve a six-year term. They are they have a little bit more independence from the day-to-day -day opinion of the voters. And now each state, whereas the House of Representatives, you're representatives are based on the amount of, or the number of representatives you have are based on the population. Senators are not that, are not set up that way. They are set up so that you only have two senators per state. So that means there are a total of 100 senators in the legislative branch. Like I said, it is considered the upper house. They are expected to be wiser, more experienced, and their qualifications are that they have to be at least 30 years old and they have to have been a citizen for at least nine years. So how does Congress make laws? Anyone in the House or the Senate can submit a proposal for a new law. A new law proposal is called a bill. So, if the House approves a bill, it goes to the Senate. If both the House and the Senate approve the bill, it goes to the President to be signed. Now, the President can veto the bill, which means he can reject it. He can say, nope, I don't agree with this. You guys are going to have to do this again. So, if the President vetoes a bill, Congress can override the President's veto with a two-thirds majority in both the House and the Senate. Now, the powers of Congress. These are outlined in Article 1, and Article 1 spells out exactly what Congress is able to do. They are able to decide how to spend money raised through taxes. They are able to have the power to raise um, an army or navy. They're able to declare war. They are able to pay government debts. They can grant citizenship. And this is one of the things that's really interesting about the Congress is they can create laws that enable them to carry out its other powers. And you might be thinking, well, what are those other powers? So they created what's called the Elastic Clause. So this, is, this allows them to stretch their powers. So it allows Congress to do many things that were never listed in 
the Constitution as being its powers. It can kind of create its own powers as long as those powers don't violate the powers given to the other branches of government. 